Okay, folks, good morning. We're going to see if uh, we can't uh, wrap up these guys right here. These are the ones, the, my Hungarian light horse that I ended up uh, basing last night. And as you can see, this uh, the base material is dry now. So we're going to be painting that up and, uh, and finishing these out. Okay. So let's get to work. Now the first thing we're going to do is these are going to use my standard uh, temperate climate uh, basing, which consists of, I'm trying to find the old bottle, I'm trying to use up some of these old bottles here, chocolate brown, thank you, chocolate brown, uh, Where's the mid-tone? The mid-tone is U.S. Field Drab. And the lightest tone is... Uh, it's a rocky sand. We just got to find out where that joker hid to. Is it this one? Nope, that's buff, which is nearly the same. But I don't want to get into the habit of doing things that are close because it won't turn out looking the same way. His Iraqi sand. So that's these three that we're going to be doing. All right. And let's see. Do we have one of these that's already been dry brushed on? No. Uh, somewhere. This one's seen better days. All right, we'll use that one. Okay. So this seems like it would be pretty much straightforward and pretty easy to do, but I can tell you from personal experience, basing these, painting these three stands is going to take a lot longer than you think it's going to. So we'll see. We will try to finish it. Um, I've got other things I need to do today. Uh, this is a work day, but um, not for me. I took the day off. I'm getting to the end of the year, and I have to use these days or give them away. So, uh, with that said, I don't want to give them away. So, uh, we just, uh, we're going to do some painting here, and then we're going to do some other stuff. So, okay. <clears throat> Let's get some of this stuff up. And see if we can paint without the contact, with the contacts in, wearing my readers which I don't use to read. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be, this is kind of paint intensive. And, um, you know, I know what we're gonna do. I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and base all these guys brown and then we're gonna stop there because if I remember correctly, this takes a little bit of time uh, to dry before I can do that. At least that's what my plan is. Uh, I have to change it at any moment, so. We're just gonna come in here and, and paint this brown. We're gonna go ahead and do the edges first. Because uh, normally when my normal painting, that uh, the drying time isn't an issue. It is with this, so. I was gonna cop out of doing this, but I figured, ah, let's do a video. during a different time here, see who we can catch online. And I think there'd be a bunch of people online considering 
half the world seems to be on lockdown. Add a little bit of water to this to get it to flow a little bit better. Because this texture material does have quite a bit of grittiness where sometimes the paint doesn't get in there. I'm having some issues with the light, getting a lot of shadow. Let's make sure this is up with that. Okay, perfect. I don't know why you just insist on sending me an e email notifying me that I'm online. I, I can't check my emails, dude. I'm online. So I forgot to mention, you don't want to use a brush here that you care a whole lot for because this uh, material does have some grittiness to it and you got to booger up the brush for sure. So, um, you know, use the brush for a while and then it goes, uh, this is, you want to use a second or a third tier brush here. So this is, I don't use any of my good ones for doing the, the terrain on here because they get all uh, misshapen and well I don't treat them the best either you know you need to kind of uh, get this paint where it needs to go when you're running it over this surface which is kind of rough it's not uh, pumice stone but it's um, you wouldn't want to fall on this stuff so I think it's got uh, pieces of resin in it that's that's the material I don't think it's natural material that's in it but um, Switch to Triumph. Well, I tried Triumph and I didn't like it. So I played it. We were prepared to go to Historicon and play Triumph. And, uh, you know, they changed the rules twice at the last minute and uh, we didn't want to relearn the rules. And the people down here in uh, the people down here in Florida wanted to play 3.0, so you know you kind of have to go with what your game group wants to do. You can't just uh, go it alone. Well, you can go it alone and then end up no players. So by all means, I've been a proponent of if you want to play another set of rules, play a set of rules. You know, I'm not forcing anybody to play anything. I 
I know the Triumph guys pretty well, and they're good guys. I just uh, can't play both set of rules. So, and I don't have uh, I don't have time to switch between the rules and and spend a month or something trying to figure them out. So. If I was going to play another set of rules, I'd make my own. Uh, I don't see... Triumph doesn't fix any of my issues that I have with DBA. And honestly, for me, it's more interesting. I'm more interested in... Um, in having a rule set that I can paint these figures. And then when I'm done painting, I can play with them and not argue about rules. That's my preference. So... If I want to fix the stuff that I didn't like about DBA or... Triumph doesn't improve on them, in my opinion. It gets it's a couple of things that are better, and a couple of things that, in my opinion, aren't better. And it doesn't fix. It still has the same issues in both. So, um, I know last time we played Triumph and switched back to 3.0, man, it took like three months to get back in the groove and learn everything. So, won't be doing that again. No point in having to relearn, relearn rules. So, Hey, Joe. I'm not working. Yes, I'm working on this. Well, you're not working. Are you screwing around while you're at work? <laughs> I took today and tomorrow off. So I got to use my days off or uh, I'm going to have to walk away from them. So I picked a couple days at the last minute that looked like they were going to be really not busy. A lot of things canceled at the last minute. Uh, people got a case of the stupids in November in my with uh with our jobs and december is absurd it's absurd we basically you know right now it's like hey can you please take things no no they can't no we can't take anything but in the come december one we have to tell people to go fly a kite because it's too busy so um you know it's extremes so anyhow Gonna try to knock these guys out. I don't know how far I'm gonna get because I got other things I'd like to do today that don't involve finishing these guys. Not that I don't want to finish them, but um, you know, I can do I can do this uh, on a normal week. I got to do a couple things today that uh, I can't do on a normal week. So, including going to the post office. I'm not looking forward to doing that. I would rather get uh, raped by a donkey than go to the post office, but uh, I got to do it. So, um, I can't think of many places I would rather. I'd rather go to a courthouse than go to the post office. So,
I gotta, I gotta mail something out of the country and I'm sure I'm gonna get a lots of tude there. So that's why I don't like going to the post office. But it's a lot easier to do today than uh, during my lunch break on a working day where my limited amount of time off is like holy. I go to lunch during uh, my lunch break on a normal work day. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to be interrupted. Leave me alone. <laughs> I have a freaking hour. <laughs> I want to escape to somewhere else for an hour. <laughs> All right, so this one's done. At least I think so. I may, may have, sometimes you miss a spot or the paint will pop. No big deal. It's, it doesn't happen that often. Adding a little bit of water helps it flow a little bit better. So, Unfortunately, the cold weather was supposed to start today. It looks like it backed up one day. Well, the cooler weather, let's put it that way. And um, figures. It'll be cooler weather when I, when I go back to work, supposedly now. Which sucks because they'll run the damn, those sons of bitches will run the damn heater. My opinion on doing the Serbs. Well, I didn't know that Kurosan made any. I know that you said that uh, there were some that kind of worked. Um, I'm surprised that Essex doesn't have a Serb army. That is Luke's freaking fav favorite army that... Uh, he went to go uh, buy it on eBay and somebody got it from him at the last minute. So um, he loves the army, um, that later Serb army there, just before they got crushed by the Ottomans. Um, don't know how that would happen in DBA, but uh, <laughs> it's a good list. Uh, I'm surprised that Essex doesn't make an army list, an army pack for them because they make 12 packs a night. Well, in real, in all honesty, and on raw, in all honesty, geez, have a drink, coffee. In all honesty, it's six packs of, of knights. They just have some armored horses or unarmored horses. Um, I wouldn't use this. I would probably not use the Serbs with a lot of armored horses, but that's just me. They've, there's a... There's a lot of info on Serb heraldry uh, out there. So, a um, lot of red and white stuff on there. A lot of red and white in the Serbs, the Poles, and who else is a lot of red and white? I guess the Hungarians have a fair amount of red and white. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there on them. Um, I've got to build a knight stand at some point for them. Well, I don't have to do it um, because they fit in my Ottoman army, but that's the that's the choice from hell. My Ottoman army has that choice from hell, whether you take a... There's pretty much standard everything on there, except you've got one element that can be an artillery piece or a Serb knight um, or a, a fast horde, and you really need all three. Um, well, you don't need the knight as much as the other one, other two. You need the fast hold because you just need some foot guys. There's zero foot in that army. And, um, but, you know, foregoing the artillery piece in a, in, a, in a Turkish army, I mean, who the hell has, if the Turks don't have artillery, who the hell does, right? So, um, but yeah, they make, Six, six different packs of, of uh, Serbian knights. This is Essex. And uh, in armored and unarmored horses. So that's really 12. And um, what else did they make? They make some bowmen. They make some spearmen. And um, yeah, they make no army pack for them. It's very strange. So 
But if you can make them through Curacao, make them through Curacao. Um, I'm kind of scared of using Curacao because I've seen some people post some um, some figures um, that they have painted and the horses are really, really long. And it's probably just one of the sculptors that does that way because Curacao uses multiple sculptors. And I would hate to get uh, an army where the horses wouldn't fit on the stands because they're too damn long. Um, but, um, yeah, by all means, do the Serbs. Means I don't have to do them. I don't know if they fought the, you said they fought the Hungarians. I know they can have the Hungarians as, they can be an ally of the Hungarians. Until what, their list goes through like 1459, so. They get, um. They end up becoming a, um joining the Ottomans after that. Yes, it's one of their enemies. Okay. I think the Serbs are Orthodox, aren't they? And the Hungarians are like the I read a book on uh, on the Dracula thing, and that seemed to be a really big thing. That the um, in Eastern Europe, the Catholics and the Orthodox really didn't get along. Seems like, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's like you know, if you want to fight each other, get rid of the Turks first, then you can settle your differences. But no, they uh, they sometimes would rather join the Turks against the the other the other Christian instead of um instead of siding with them but interesting stuff reading about the history of this stuff. So that's why I don't do any fantasy gaming. This is uh plenty interesting enough for me. Now we're gonna have to downsize into something smaller. Try to get in here between. Not a big problem. Yeah, after these two days, I got two and a half more days to kind of have the same in the same boat. I got to try to take them at the last minute if I can on a slow day, but I'm not sure if I want to have a chance to. They're just too busy. It's just way too busy. I think after Thanksgiving, uh, even the week of Thanksgiving, I'm off the week of Thanksgiving. We're supposed to travel, so um, I don't think that's going to happen now, but that just means uh, more painting videos that week. So that's for those of you that are not in the U.S., that's next week. So, um, but I don't want to take a day off when it's super busy because I just create more work for myself. It's just not worth it. Okay, that one's done. All right, back to this one. This one here. All right. Let's, uh. Put this one away. 
get the big big boy out of here again. <laughs> Hey, good morning, um, Todd. Man, I forgot you. It's been a while. <laughs> yep, kind of a fluke to catch me at this time. It's just, this is normal working hours on a normal working day. Oh, great. You don't want to come out. I'm going to come back to him later, and that's why I have an extra bottle of this stuff over here. This is probably the thing I use the most amount of paint on, so... Um, I could use craft paint, but I like the colors I've picked for this. And um, and craft paint, let's just face it, it just doesn't cover the same. It just doesn't. I don't have a problem with it. There's certain things I use it for, but not this. Because I'm not going to seal after this. This is, uh, we don't need to seal the bases. Really hasn't been an issue of it anymore. And I don't really want to create more steps in my painting system that already has too many steps as it is, so. I don't need to get less stuff done than I'm already <laughs> not getting. That's the only thing I don't like about this process is this, um, there we go, is this basing takes, um, you know, I got to wait six hours to, uh, once I apply this stuff, at least, at least six hours before I can paint on it. And um, you definitely want to do that overnight so you could use some of that time while you're, you're, you're not, not here, but uh Pretty much everything else I can paint, I, I don't have to wait on it drying. It's just one thing after another. Well, the ceiling I do, but not much. I don't wait the... I don't know what those uh, spray bottles of um, Model Master uh, sealant are supposed to say. I've read on there, and it actually doesn't say drying time, probably, so they uh, you can't hold them to something. But I bet if you find their website, you looked it up, it'd be something like 24 hours. I'm not waiting 24 hours between spray coats. Sorry, pal. I got stuff to knock out. I got stuff to knock out. Yeah, I spent all this year asking for time off and then at the last minute turning it back in because what we'd planned on going on didn't go off. So, 
Um, I can't just carry over days. They don't let me carry over days. They don't let me cash them out either. So, uh. oh well. Just one of those things. Better get used to it because it'll be this. I'm sure it'll be the same scenario next year. And maybe even the same scenario year after that. Uh, I see no signs of this, of going back to 2019. But I got lots to paint. I'm good here, so. Let's get with the smaller one now. I don't want to paint over these rocks if I don't have to because they already have a natural color to them that I'll end up dry brushing the top two shades over and uh, just keeps me from having to paint them to, get, to begin with. So that's actually real granite. So that's actually the hardest part on these figures is not the actual metal, but these little rocks that are on there. So you don't want to chew on them for sure. Am I out of coffee? All right, let me go get some coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, I wish I could work from home, man. I know I hear people complaining, man, I gotta work from home. I'm tired of working from home. Yeah, well, I'm tired of, when you work from home, you wear wherever the hell you want. I seem like running around in your underwear, but I gotta wear uncomfortable shoes and stuff at work, you know, and be out in the out in the heat. The fact that I could be indoors, yeah, I I take that. Maybe your day goes by really slow, and that sucks. I could see that.
Come on, dude. There you go. There we go. <laughs> All snotty. This is time consuming. You know, you'd think, ah, I just slap some brown paint on there. Well, you don't want to slap some brown paint on there and then end up painting over stuff that you were careful with. So, you only have to do it once. Once you're done painting this base, you don't have to paint it again. first guy we did is probably done now. He's probably dry. Because you need this stuff to dry, otherwise the colors will blend together when you end up dry brushing them over. So. Uh, let's see. Can't entertain everybody. Hey, I'm doing my own thing. If you guys happen to find interest in what I'm doing, that's cool. You know? That's always good. All right. This is US Fuel Drab. This is my mid shade. And this looks like a good brush to do this with so I'm gonna come over here this is about the only dry brushing you'll see me do that and chain mail I don't know why I'm having such a problem with the light you know, the lights just misbehaving here
get these guys done. We don't have no longer have to play, paint any light horse for this army. So we're either going to do the bows or knights next. So probably going to do the knights. Probably going to make this army workable like I planned. I was doing a, a later period version of this army. I'm going to complete that thing and then go back and build the other elements there for the earlier army. But there's still lots to do. We still have two deep knight elements, a command stand, a command knight, and uh, two war wagons for sure. So war wagons will take a while. Not the wagons themselves, but the actual crew and everything. So you guys will get to see some battles with, uh, with war wagons. And so will we. <laughs> so will we. Good morning, John Peter. Lazy day for you. You have time to watch in the middle of the day. There you go. Well, I think I already talked about it yesterday. You knew that I had the day off. So for a little bit, I want to get these guys knocked out and then uh, move on to the other stuff I have planned for today. But I didn't even bother trying to paint it uh, early in the morning because it just wasn't going to happen. Need to wait for the girls to get out of the get out of the house. My nemesis is interruptions. So, I rather I've gotten to the point where I almost would rather not do something than get interrupted by do it in the middle of doing it. That's uh reminds me too much of work. Yeah, time passes really fast when you're doing this, mainly because this is just so time intensive, but really no other way around it. Okay, last one.
like it or not, I almost have every day off. I need to respond to phone calls and emails, but now not much going going on now. Yeah, well, I don't think it's going to change very often for you. I mean, I hope it does, but if the conditions that we have right now are causing what you're dealing with, I, I don't think anything's going to change anytime soon, so... Uh, you want to do another solo game today, nobodies versus Romans, but it's a rainy overcast day, the lightning will not be good, and I have a bunch of other excuses just listening to your dulcet tones. <laughs> excuses, excuses. Yeah, I know that uh, the shutdown and stuff affects what you do for a living. I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, you better buckle up for a while. I don't I don't see anything, at least over here, changing. So which is unfortunate, but I was just mentioning earlier I I had a couple of days. I've spent all all year um I don't have a ton of days off, but I've spent all year canceling vacations at the last minute because what we were gonna do wasn't gonna happen, this cruise wasn't gonna happen, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to take time off just to sit at home like I'm doing right now. But it gets to the point where I have to use my days before uh, Christmas or they, I can't carry any of them over and I won't get paid for them. That's new. They used to be able to do, used to just get paid for them and that was great. So uh, I don't know why they decided to change that company policy, but they did it about four years ago. Because uh, I don't want to take days off just to screw around at home. I got to leave everything done and then I got to come up and clean up after the horses when I come back in. So it's like a double whammy. You know, it's like, it's got to be really worthwhile what I'm doing to, for me to take off. Otherwise, why create extra work for myself? But once they stop paying me for the days, I'm like, well, I guess I got to take them off, but I'll try to find something uh, noteworthy to do. So what we were doing was we were taking a spring break trip with a family. Uh, I was doing all the convention, the convention tours, which that uses up uh, six days, four for Historicon, and then one each for the uh, for the the Orlando conventions, and then uh, taking the rest of the days uh, either between Christmas and New Year's, which nothing really is going on during that time, uh, and uh, doing a hunt, a uh, you know anniversary trip, which is uh, around Veterans Day every year early early to mid november so that's what we were doing but it had just time to cancel everything you know so um but whatever if i have to not use some of my days i don't have to use some of my days but i i took today uh, today and tomorrow off because they're supposed to be really really light we've had a lot of cancellations in in november mostly due to rain um and um so i might as well leave if I'm going to not be at work, I might as well not be at work on days that aren't going to create a big problem for me when I get back. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's why I'm not at work. So I got to do that for two and a half other days also or walk away from them. So. Yeah, I don't see this current situation changing at all. There's too many, the people that are controlling it and telling people that they can't open, they can't do that, are still drawing their paycheck and they're keeping everybody else from drawing theirs. So, um, anyhow, I don't, I don't see, uh, I don't see it changing until people get upset with the situation and I don't see people getting upset with the situation. Okay. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to translate that because I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> I might have a clue if we use the same alphabet, what we don't, so. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, you inspired us to make a video about deviation. Yeah, any idiot can do it. I, I'm, I'm proof of that. I'm not a tech savvy person. Um, I said I was going to try doing this and I'm going to keep making them until they can become a pain in the butt. And, you know, and it's come close a few times with the uh, editing exporting part, not the filming part. Um, but uh, yeah, any, 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 any simple moron can do it. <laughs> I don't have any special equipment. This is just on my phone. I'm not going to buy a video camera or none of that stuff. That's just, um, I kind of went on the cheap side because if I had to walk away from it, I didn't want to feel bad where I dumped a lot of money in it. But no, that's good. Um, that's good. You guys do a lot of, uh, in Russia, you guys do 170 second scale, I think, plastic, right? Um, there's quite a few, there's quite a few plastic uh 172nd scale manufacturers in Russia now. You got uh, Zev Zevda and uh, what's the other one? Um, that's funny because I was just on uh, Plastic Toy Soldier Review the other day looking at all this stuff. Uh, I'm a big World War II gamer, so I wanted to see what, what was new on there. Um, Strelzil something. I don't remember which one it is. Zvezda, Zvezda, and there's another one um, that has a lot of stuff, but, so there's one company, and I don't remember which one it is, it's a Russian company, um, is it MIR, or maybe that's a Ukrainian one, um, anyways, there's some, uh, there's, there's some company that, um, that makes, um, that makes a bunch of stuff like um, a, lo a lot of 170 second scale figures because I don't do fantasy, I don't do uh, ancients and medievals in 170 second, but I do do World War II. And before this, I'm a huge World War II nut, especially the Eastern Front. And um, the uh, one of the companies makes a set of uh, Russian tank ride, uh, not a Russian tank crew, and they have some dismounted guys. And one guy's got like. Uh, they're either Molotov cocktails or as I like to think of vodka bottles and he's carrying them down the, you know, they got some dismounted guys. Like one guy's got a DP machine gun and you got the uh, uh, tank commander shooting with his pistol. And, but one of the guys is, is walking around with, uh, with a whole uh, five or six bottles of, uh, of something. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I got half a mind to get that and paint those guys up. But um, I forget which company it is. Um, there's so many of them now. I mean, when 20 years ago, when I was doing that stuff, the, you know, Eshi, you had the old Airfix figures. Uh, of course, all everything that was available in um, in white metal, in uh, lead, pewter, um, Eshi, Airfix, Atlantic, which is those French figures that are horrible. Not because they're French, they're just molded really weird. I think the Eshi figures are molded really weird too. It's almost like their heads are too big and their helmets don't fit on right. And they got big neck, long necks. I don't know. They just don't look right. Um, but um, anyhow, yeah, that's now they've got so many things now. You got Pegasus, you got, you got all kinds of stuff. You got all kinds. Now, I don't like plastic figures because they're bendy. But um, but um, I do have some, and um, I haven't painted them yet because you know I haven't painted all my lead ones either. But um, many of them look okay. They look more realistic. You know, the one seventy second scale figures are definitely more realistic looking than than these clowns. Uh, these are like stumpy and stuff like that. The the one seventy second scale plastics are proportioned well. So, and I was on that. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my videos, and I talked myself into checking it out again. It's called uh, Plastic Toy Soldier Review. And you go on there, and you can check everything by period. Of course, everything is one... I think everything in there is one seventy second scale. You can go in there and go by manufacturer, by period, and you... I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you didn't even know about. And they rate everything. They show everything that comes in the pack, and the poses, how many of each pose, and then they rate them based on um, the pose variety... Uh, what type of poses, how much flashing they have, uh, how durable they are, because some of them sometimes are really bendy. It's really, really interesting. Um, really interesting stuff. People have 
spent a lot of time trying to inform others through that website. I, I, I really appreciate that. It's a really cool website. I think somebody mentioned the uh, Airfix figure charades or something like that. So I went in there. You know, I grew up in the uh, in the early 80s. I had all the... Here in the United States, there were, there were the Airfix molds, but they were put together by... Uh, a company called MPC, right? Model Products Company or something like that. They just rebranded all of the Airfix stuff. I think it was all of it was Airfix. And they had new box art and everything because I love the box art that, that uh, MPC figures had. And, um, and I had a lot of their 172nd scale and 1600 scale ships. Um, but as a kid, you know, we didn't have a hobby store here in town um, that would carry all that stuff that I remember at the time. And, um, they were, um, there was no Airfix here in town. Uh, it was, air, it was just, uh, marketed by, uh, MPC. So, and of course they made, you know, model cars and stuff like that, whatever. But, um, I always liked their box art. Um, and, uh, those Airfix figures are definitely classic. And I remember they made them in one thirty second as well. And it was like the same mold, so you could get the Desert Rats or the Africa Core or whatever, and they were still the same poses that they were in the 172nd scale figures. So, yeah, good times. Good times. I looked them up the other day. I was looking around them on eBay, and now they're, they go for a fortune. I mean, I wouldn't want to buy them. I've still got them. I mean, I don't have the boxes or anything, but I've, I've got them... Uh, um, I've got some of those figures laying around or whatever. As a matter of fact, one of them, uh, the German Mountain Troop set came with a little horse that had like two little boxes that would go on the side of it. You could like glue them on or whatever. It was just like a, a hollow box and had one peg and there was a peg that went into the horse. Well, one of those little boxes I ended up using in my Spanish castle, uh, my DBA Spanish castle. Uh, I just got sidetracked. Oh, well, I'm having fun talking about this stuff. Let's see if I can find it. I know it's out there because it just went, it just went to Mitch's house recently. I just gotta find where it is. Of course it got damaged a little bit, I gotta fix it. This thing's made out of styrofoam. This was the first camp I ever made. I mean, you guys like it when I get sidetracked anyway, so. Okay, yeah, this is made out of styrofoam completely. This is like the first camp I made. And uh, this is just one block of styrofoam. This, one of these little things broke. So we'll have to, as a matter of fact, I'm glad I pulled it out of here because we'll end up fixing this and it's just one of those little things that broke off. So this is a little box down here. This is from the Airfix uh, set or the MPC set of the German Mountain Troops. There it is, happy little box just hanging out right there. I just, I saw that and I'm like, eh, we'll add that on there. So this is the first camp I made about 15 years ago. So anyhow, and this is just one block of concrete and. Um, <clears throat> it's just a block of concrete, block of, uh, of, uh, of styrofoam. And I, I etched it with a, um, uh, with one of these. I can't think about, I can't think of things anymore. A toothpick. Uh, I just etched into it and then I dry brushed and painted it and it didn't take long to do actually. What was difficult to do was these little battle mitts cause I had to come in and cut and then chip away and get to go smaller and smaller and smaller. But the rest of it was really easy. You know, I took a hot wire thing and, and, and zip one through and through the middle. This little door is just made of cardboard, made to look like it's wood. Good times. Anyhow, I like my camps to, to reflect what the army looks like, not necessarily be a camp camp, you know, not a camp that, uh, you know, like tents and stuff like that. Um, I, I like to, for them to have kind of a, a feeling of what the army is, is, is really is. So that reminds me, I need to put these arms away. We're going to be playing later on today and I don't want to show up at this place with the wrong, with the wrong package of figures and have to turn back around and come back and get the right ones. I believe these are the boys I'm going to use today. Let's see that is correct. Not telling you what the theme's gonna be. You guys are just gonna have to wait. I promise you it'll be something different. So, 
hopefully it'll be something you guys enjoy. Anyhow, I look forward to, you know what, having a game night and not having to stay up till frickin' midnight to edit the video and then going into work after having only three hours of sleep because I ain't working tomorrow either. So, anyhow, it'd be nice for a change. I just had to step away to take a call, but I've caught up to you. I've caught up by speeding you up. Oh, okay. I'm. I listened to myself. I was looking for some something on one of my videos, and I listened to myself at a faster speed. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't know where the hell I left off. I think I did. We're done with the mid tone here. We need to do the no. We're done with a light tone here. We need to do a light tone here. Right, got it. Uh, you what? You bought a side wheeler from Zvezda, I think, for my 15 millimeter colonials. I cut it at the waterline and it just looks great in the harbor. So if I was gonna do another period, <laughs> if I was gonna do another period, we got a great big group of guys where we did when we had conventions that like to do Sword in a Flame. They do Sword to Flame 28 millimeter. I am not painting 28 millimeter figures, period. Um, the only reason I would do it is if we were going to play some kind of game. Like, what was that uh, Games Workshop game that was really popular that took place in the city and you have like a little war band of like six guys or whatever you paint? So if I've got to paint like an army and it's only six figures in 28 millimeter, I forget what it is. I don't, I don't know what the, the Games Workshop lore or the Citadel lore is, but uh, it came out around 2000 or something like that. But some town or whatever. It's named after one of their fictitious towns where you take your little war band and you go around and, and kind of do a fight, almost like little duels and stuff. Mordheim, there you go. That's the one. And uh, yeah, if I was going to do something like that, I would do 28. So I'm not putting on like 20 or 30 figures, supply all the figures. They don't worry about people destroying my figures. No, I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. Gaming for me doesn't cause, it should not cause stress. So. Uh, but if I was going to get into another period, I could see um, I could see doing something like Sword in the Flame, and uh, I've got a really interesting story about Sword in the Flame. But uh, there's one there's uh, there's some guys that play Sword in the Flame, and they're good guys, and they they show up at our our shows. Our shows, of course, have a variety of different games. It's not just DVA related. I mean, we're over in a corner playing our DVA thing, our DVA world, but there's other games of all kinds of different stuff going on. And uh, Sword and Flame just happens to be one of them. They normally run uh, at least three games every show of them. And they're four-hour, five-hour games of Sword and the Flame in 28 mil. And uh, after one game, I decided to join them. And, you know, and, and we were kind of, we went out to the, I want to call it the Irish bar, but it's not the Irish bar across the street because uh, it's the it's the uh, UK bar um, because they had, um, they got a, a Welsh and a Scottish and a, English and, a, and an Irish flag out there, whatever. It's a non-denominational <laughs> uh, uh, bar out there. And uh, over drinks, I'm discussing, you know, we're kind of having this brainstorming session about, you know, how he could expand what he's got. And he's like, he was thinking about doing Afghanistan. I said, oh, you could do all kinds of stuff in Afghanistan. You could have Russians. Of course, you're still talking 1880s, 1890s, period. You know, you could have Russians. You could have a, a group of, uh, you could have all kinds of stuff, missionaries, um, uh, of course, all the, all the nomads and all their factions and all that kind of stuff. You know, you could have uh, all kinds of brainstorming ideas. We were really like coming up with one thing after another. And the funny thing is, is that he, you know, the good game master just kicking back beers like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So next time I run into him, I don't know if it was at this show. I don't think I saw him, saw him the rest of the show. I saw him at the next show we went to, and I'm like, hey, did you come? what did you think about all those ideas we brainstormed? He didn't remember having the conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I guess he uh, was enjoying the beverages more than I was. Let's put it that way. So, But that's a, that's, that's a period that would be really interested. I'm not particularly interested in playing, um, say, Zulus and British. Um, or I'm not particularly interested in playing natives versus uh, Europeans uh, alone. I, I would be more interested in 
uh, one of those things where everybody's at it with uh, different things. So, um, but anyhow, uh, I have to move into the Thirty Years' War period. There were some significant actions in my neighborhood, but I don't have details yet. I mentioned before that the Spanish were here. Yeah. Yeah, Spanish Road on the way to the Netherlands. Yep. Yep, my people. We just wanted to fight everybody at the same time. <laughs> War Games Atlantic has some nice plastic Afghans during the colonial times. Oh, yeah, I mean, you could do French foreign. You could do lots of stuff in that period, you know. Uh, you know, the the World War that never was, you know, basically like World War One, but just, uh, what, 30, 40 years earlier. That could be interesting. They make figures for that. You could use the Franco-Prussians and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I could see that being interesting. But I would do it in 15s. But again, I'm just... I'm just a diary of the mouth here. I don't. I don't have. Um, I don't have time to do all of those. All of those things, you know. So, um, I thought about doing World War One as well, in a setting that doesn't involve trench warfare. But again, it's uh, in twenty millimeter because I found. Uh, I saw some guy that was selling a bunch of them on eBay, and uh, they're made by a company called um, Tumbling Tumbling Dice. Okay, and because all of my World War Twos are twenty mil, and um, I really like the way they're sculpted, and um, that would be cool to do that kind of stuff. But there's only a limited amount of time that that we all have. So, do you want to have a lot of different periods with a lot of different stuff and nothing complete, or do you want to just focus on DBA and you know, and kick that in the? And that's kind of what I've done. I mean, as much as I want to branch out into the Renaissance stuff, I just, I just, you know, that's going to be, um, that's going to be one of those things where uh, I'll end up working on the rules and stuff and I won't have any games to show you guys. So I really am enjoying the whole filming and kind of sharing our experiences with the rest of the world more than anything else. So my interest in jumping into different periods and stuff has really diminished ever since I started filming, you know, because I think that, um, we're more useful, uh, just comparing the colors here, we're more useful do, continuing to do what we're doing. So, I'm not sure if I've got to lighten it up anymore. Let's, uh, let's just go over a little bit and make sure that there's not any spots here that really need attention. You still want some of the other colors to show up. Now, one thing we got to do is we got to get our old El, El Cheapo black paint out, which I found a replacement for. I had, uh, this stuff is running out on me big time. And um, if you go to the craft stores here, this this type of paint, the cheap craft paint is like gone. It's, it's, it's I think, a combination of a lot of people that have gotten into painting with it that, you know, during these times that weren't painters and they consumed all the supply and they're just not reordering it like they used to, or it's not being manufactured like it used to. I mean, a combination of all those things. There's this big old turd there of that stuff. And um, <clears throat> so I happened to go to the craft store the other day and um, saw, I forget which one, who had it. Maybe it was Hobby Lobby. And um, I bought a couple of them. So I've got two more of these black things on here that, uh, if I run out, and I'm still not out of this one, so we're gonna paint the edges of these stands. And this we got to make sure we dry before we put the grasses and stuff because we'll, we don't want that 
stuff stuck to the outside, so. You have 25 millimeter Zulus in British. I did Rourke's Drift, but pretty one-sided. I have to say though that my 200 Zulu figures beat my 30 fig Brits each time at Rourke's Drift. It's better with a soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch has like a six millimeter, a bunch of six millimeter figures to do uh, Zulus and Brits, but you know, he said, Oh, I'm going to do that one day. And I'm like, um, Okay, but he doesn't paint, so I don't know how that's going to work. DBA's really changed my outlook on rules a lot in that they need to be, they need your interest, rules need to keep your interest, and you need to have like meaningful decisions that you make from turn to turn. If it's one of those, well, what else would I do? Go, I'm going to go move forward. You know, if it's rules that play like that, they're not, I'm not going to enjoy them. You know, it's not that they need to be Barkeries ish, it's just that they need, you need to have meaningful decisions each turn. And lots of different ways to skin a cat. So, um, so because we did a lot of naval war gaming before DVA, and when I look back on it, I'm like, I wouldn't want to do that again. There's no meaningful decisions to make, you know. Uh, turn broadside. Okay, get multiple guys shooting at this guy. Cross the T. Okay, what else do you do? Nothing. I mean, you know, it's like none of it's a lot of it is just kind of on autopilot. A lot of it is just on autopilot. If I did do 28s, I would make sure to do them in a way that I could pull them off the stand and use them individually in a skirmish game. So in other words, if I was if I was if these guys were in if these guys were in 28 millimeter instead of 15, they would be on a separate base of whatever size. It would fit inside this stand. So I could put them and then it would be magnetized. So it could fit inside the stand as individually and it would make a unit. Or I could pull them off and I could fight with them on that stand as individual figures without a doubt. Now, I don't do it in this scale because you really just can't. I mean, you wouldn't be able to, well, you wouldn't be able to stack them this close together. You couldn't put these guys by themselves. But that way you have the best of both worlds and, you know, and be able to do that. But And they make say sabos for that. I've seen them do them. Now, it's a little distracting having to circular shapes of of the figures that can come off the stand but it allows you to do um, a skirmish game with those same figures if you wanted to do that and in my case in 15s if i'm looking at something like let's say i wanted to do renaissance I could just paint whatever figures I wanted. I wouldn't have to be like, well, okay, I want to use, they came out with new figures for these guys. Oh, damn, what do I do with the old, you know, that kind of stuff. So, um, but as, as difficult as I think these rules that we're playing now are for newcomers to learn, I just don't want to learn any new rules. I, I've just, I've gone too much. It's been too much of an uphill battle with these that, 
you know, I don't want to start over and get a bunch of shit wrong. You know, that's very unfulfilling for me to, to realize after you've played several battles that you did something wrong, you know, when it was unintentional. So. I want to play a different set of rules. I just make my own set of rules. But we're not going to go down that road just yet. Okay, got everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just gotta dry a little bit while we set up the material for the next step. Online D&D &D game. I know lots of people that are doing those. I wouldn't do one just because I'd just, I'd just fire up the Xbox and play uh, Diablo. And that's something I can do with my family. Because my family are not gamers, but I can get the girls to play Diablo. We have sp we've spent many hours, tens of, probably hundreds of hours playing throughout the, throughout the years. Okay, we're going to need those two. And what else we got here? Nope. This stuff right here. We're going to need our little control. And we're going to have to take a little bathroom break. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh. Okay. Got a grass. Got this. And looking for the one package of the other tufts. And it's here somewhere. Yeah, this thing's supposed to be organized. And it's more organized than anybody else's, and I still can't find it. Ha! It's somewhere it's not supposed to be. 20 lashes. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and pull these guys out. We're doing three stands, so we're probably going to do, uh, let's just pull 
Let's pull a few of these out and we'll figure it as we go. That's how I like to do. Shoot from the hip. We'll do two of these. This is Army Painter Lowland Shrubs. And we've got uh, Tough Swamp from Army Painter. We'll uh, pull a couple of these out as well. Two should be fine. And this is Gamer's Grass. Uh, Autumn Small Tufts. Let's, uh, let's grab three of these. These are smaller. Uh, I lied. Four. Okay. Put all this stuff away. If we have extras, we'll have extras and we just reuse them on something else. Look at a couple things. First of all, use this thing right here. And let's get uh, good old Elmer's. Uncle Elmer's here. A PVA, as you guys like to call it in the UK. Polyvinyl acrylate, right? Is that what it is? Fancy name for white glue. <laughs> All right, and you guys don't hear my chair anymore. I ended up replacing my chair with the other office chair because the other one used to pop, crack, and bitch. So we got rid of that one because uh, I don't like that sound, having that sound on here. So let's cut this thing in half. Okay, let's cut this one in half again as well. Okay, and we'll leave those whole cut one of these in half all right now we got something to work with here let's get lay tweezers and let's clean them off sometimes they got something gluey on here no idea what the hell that was How are we doing on the dry level? I think we can probably move forward. Okay. okay. Just to show you guys where we're at and what we're looking like at the point that we're at, these guys are completely dry brushed and we're ready to add happy little grass on here. So, okay. motivational beverage. What do we got here? John Peter. I have many small units. 12 to 24 figures and 25 millimeter. All singer figures. I keep thinking, oh, you could do a nice scenario around these, but it hasn't happened yet. Western gunfight, Vikings, and so on. Yeah, we're all dreamers. <laughs> we're all dreamers. It happens. I've just at least had the sense of not buying stuff anymore. I'll like surf figures and go, oh, okay, well, if I did it, I would use this figure and I put this one there and kind of think about it for like two or three days and then forget about it and don't do anything about it. So, whew. Don't have to worry about that anymore, you know? Let's, uh, let me get my coaster out here. I try to collect coasters every time I go on vacation, so I don't think they're worth anything, just uh, different places that we go. How the hell did I get that one? I was like, Cafe Noir from Brussels? I've never been to Brussels. When I flipped it over, I'm like, oh, it's the hangar bar at Disney Springs. This is the this is the bar that the theme of it is done as the um, the mechanic for Indiana Jones in the first movie. Uh, what's his name? Jock Lindsay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's all themed like that. The, they call it the Indiana Jones bar. Even though it's not really Indiana Jones, it's his mechanic. So, anyhow, um, I try to steal those from every place that I go. So, I can... Uh... All 
I'm always drinking something. And I'm always drinking something that's sweating. I don't think any, I don't drink anything warm. I drink cold things. I'm hot blooded. No singing. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, we don't need that quite yet. Let's go ahead and I think I need to do them one at a time. I think I learned my lesson last time. I think I tried to put the glue in all the places last time and, and I got I got screwed. Put this here. And the other nice thing about this grass is anything that you don't like how it turned out, you can just use it to cover it up. So, um, by the way, the grass that I'm using right now is, this is a huge pack of six of these that I bought like in 2004. This is stuff made by Scenic Express. This one happens to be farm pasture. And these are huge freaking bottles. They're 32 ounce bottles. And I'm almost down to using one of them. And uh, I've had this stuff since 2000 and maybe. So all my, all my armies have this stuff in them. Well, except the desert ones. And there's other colors in here too. There's, what's this stuff here? Uh, swampy bog blend. You know, I haven't used it once, you know, so uh, it happens. I bought like, I think it was like 40 bucks and he got like six of those things. And I haven't used any of the colors other than the one. They're just too weird looking. They're too, uh, they, they didn't work, but eh, whatever. I've got my money's out of it. Had it that long, so. What time is it, 11? Yep. This, this takes a long time, folks. You know, I got sidetracked by a little Spanish cast a little bit, but that didn't make a difference. This is just, this is precision stuff, you know. You can't just throw all this stuff together and not expect to have issues. Well, there's not going to be any grass back here unless I put some like here. So let's do that. Okay. I want some of the texture to show through. Otherwise, why even put it on there, right? I just cover the damn thing in grass and be done with it. Okay. I think that'll do. It's not very uh, scientific. You just kind of go with the flow. All right. You gotta feel like where the grass is growing, dude. All right. This is my little tray that I use to transport figures. Once they're at a location, I don't travel with this because it's not magnetic or anything, but this is just gonna be my catch-all. I'm just gonna go in. Put this stuff in there. And the back of a brush works really well for this because it's soft. You're not going to chip away at the paint on the horse. Which we do not want to do at this point. We didn't do all of this effort to get, get it wasted. That's not how I roll. The single figures... Collected are usually painted and offered on the bring and buy tables of convention, then just have to have them. 50 pirates, including can, should be fun someday. You even have the ships. I don't know how it is in Europe. Well, you're in can. A human can. I, I keep forgetting what it is. So you're like a German guy that lives in Canada, but is now in Germany. I don't know. Um, we'll still call you German. How about that? Um, I don't know how it is in Germany, but here in the U.S., there's a fascination. Even before Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a, there's a fascination with pirates. I never got into it. I never got into it. I, I don't have an affinity for it. And, uh, you know, maybe my ancestors fought against the pirates too much. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're looking like here. All right. 
Let's go to the next one. Yeah, Americans love pirates. Maybe it's that individual spirit. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Oh, oh, we just ran over those. Let's just move them off to the side. We're not going to run them over. Yeah, people love pirates. I'd rather I'd rather play the pirate hunters. I mean, obviously, I'll play anybody. You know, it's just a game. You know, but. Different people are interested in different periods for you know different reasons. Like there's lots of people that like American Civil War, and I can't think of a period I would care about less. Um, but that's just me, you know. Lots of people like it. Not really a thing that any of my ancestors fought in. So there's not that tie-in for me. And it's not really a time period that I find interesting, nor do I care for the uniforms, but you know, that's okay. That's uh, different people are interested in different stuff, so. Okay. Do the same thing with this guy. The Canadian guy who lived in Germany for 35 years. Okay. I came here just before the wall fell and I'm still here. I remember the wall. I remember when that happened. How'd you like to let how'd you like to be the last person that escaped just before the wall fell and they shot you? I don't know how long. I'm sure the stats are out there. I mean, did it happen like one year before the wall fell? You know, somebody tried to go uh go across and they shot him. And then, you know, if it had just waited a year, the wall would have fallen down. That's kind of depressing. Yeah, I remember that. I think all the atlases that I have all have a separate Germany. Of course, you know, why would you buy an atlas now? But, no. Nope. Okay. this guy. You know, without Tufts, of course. Honestly, these look like crap on video. You gotta take pictures of them for them to... And then the pictures I take aren't enhanced. But, you know, you got higher resolution and it's the, the light is... The best light is outside. I don't know what it is. It just comes from all directions and it just illuminates everything correctly. You know, you, you take pictures somewhere else and some, some things are too bright and... I don't know, that's... That's my photography lesson for today, folks. I'm not a photographer. <laughs> I roll dice and I paint things.
So you're in Canada now. I got to go to the post office and mail something to Canada, and I'm not looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be a massive pain in the ass. And I don't mean cost. I mean just all the hoops you got to go through. So there's a guy who uh, traded me some figures. You saw that I had some figures that he was interested in, and um, and I had uh, and he proposed a trade, and uh, I need to get them to him because you know. I need to do it on a day that I'm off because otherwise I've got to do it during my lunch hour and I don't want that. I don't want to do that during my lunch hour. So I will, uh, I will go do that now after we're done with the painting here. So I am not looking forward to doing that. Filling out custom forms and you know, who know who knows what the hell I got to do. It's just going to Canada. It's like the same freaking country. Except it's the metric system and you guys can't have guns. Otherwise than that, it's the same freaking country. <laughs> How about, last couple of years I got a Historicon with some really nice folks from Canada. Really nice folks. So, um, I like people from all parts of the world. People aren't defined by what country they're from, so. I'm okay. Most wars turned much worse than the last one fought. War of 1812 was just a fun afternoon compared to so, Oh, you're in Germany. See, that's what I thought. So I think I think you are a German guy that was born in Canada, right? And then you just came back to Germany because you're right there on the Dutch border. Ah, whatever. You can be both things. You can be whatever you want to be. <laughs> I like you just the same. I don't like the period because he used old tactics with neural weapons which led to slaughter and not much scope for creating any creativity in the game. Okay. I um I expect I expressed to Mitch that I was interested in uh, I played a game that one of the DBA guys, uh, a guy that he does other things, he's participant participatory games at our conventions. Okay, um, and he does some really great games. Pretty much anything he puts on, I want to play because he just he does a really good job with it. And he did uh, a variation of DBA, um, a variation of the DBM actually, for use for um, the Marburian period, uh, the Wars of uh, Louis the Fourteenth. And he did I, did we do Ramillies or did we do Blenheim? I think we did Blenheim. Anyways, uh, I thought it was really cool. And I told, of course, after playing anything like that, I'm always like, hey, I wonder if I got into it, you know, what I would have to get and that kind of thing. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, okay. This stuff going every which way. Um, and um, and Mitch talked me out of it because he said, yeah, it would just basically be like, you know, you just try to blow, away, blow a hole in somewhere and just exploit through the hole. I'm like, well, that's kind of how everything is, but... If all of your units are kind of the same, if you have like one only almost only one kind of cavalry, only one kind of infantry for the most part, it gets to be kind of boring. So you talk me out of it. But um, it's always fine to fantasize about what you would uh, you would do instead. No, let's close this up before we do what we're going to do next. I don't like spilling the stuff on my shirt because this is microfiberish and it's. Sticks to the static grass sticks to this big time. <sighs> okay. Now, now these guys are where we need them. So now we take the little tuftage and decorate them with that. Yeah, we just, I got really interested in that period when we were watching that, uh, that series Versailles, which was more like a soap opera than anything else, but... 
you know, I thought that was really interesting. Mitch and I both watched that. He turned me on to it. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is actually pretty good. So it's nice having a historical talk with somebody. You know, like there's so many people recommend shows to watch. And I find it hard to watch them because there's nobody to watch them with. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, that was a good one. We enjoyed that. We didn't watch it at the same time, but he was ahead of me because he's got cable and stuff. And I don't, I don't believe in spending that kind of money for stuff I'm not going to watch. So we had cable a long time and then realized we're paying like $150 a month just so my daughter can watch the Disney Channel. I'm like, no. So we got rid of all that stuff. There's, there's plenty of things. I mean, honestly, all you need is YouTube. There's plenty of stuff just to watch on YouTube. And I'm not talking about this stupid channel. I'm talking about just in general. There's all kinds of stuff on there. There's great stuff on there. So, uh, let's see. What did I miss? Da -da -da -da. More or less. Born in Wales to a German mother and a French father. Holy shit. I need a flow chart for your life, dude. <laughs> Moved to Germany when I was two. Moved to Canada when I was five. Back to Germany when I was 36. Back to Germany when I was 36 and still here at 69. Okay, so... You're German. You're mostly German. So do you have Canadian and, and uh, German citizenship? And then an Audubon question for you. The infamous Audubon question. I don't mean the, the uh, society where they save uh, birds, endangered birds. I'm talking about uh, the highway system. Send you my resume. <laughs> oh, I'm not hiring you. I'm not hiring. I couldn't afford you. <laughs> There's a guy that uh, one of the first people that I gave with in the mid '80s. He went to Germany. He was stationed over there. He was older than me by a few years. I think he was stationed over there. He visited over there or whatever. And at the time, he said that you know the Audubon had no speed limit. I don't know if the story was bullshit or not. So, you know, uh, I guess I could look this up on Wikipedia or whatever. But uh, he said there was no speed limit. Um, oh, hold on a second. Let me, let, me get, let me get his story right. I think he said there was a speed limit. But if you went twice that speed limit, it wouldn't kick it. I don't know. It sounded like a bullshit story. So is there, is there speed limits on the Autobahn? I mean, I, I, I think that, what, there's one lane or there's a couple lanes where you can go however the hell fast you want. And then there's one that, you know, you need to stay out of that lane unless you're going a certain speed. But um, I'm surprised that there is such a thing with. Um... With all the rules, I think there's just more there's more rules in Europe than there are here. I think I could be wrong. Maybe not on that. Uh, I was pleased to find out. Well, my daughter was pleased to find out that she could be. Uh, she could have a beer at her age in Germany, so she's like ready to go. <laughs> well, she could have in public is what I meant. You can always have a couple sips here at home, so that's uh, that keeps you from turning into an alcoholic. The way I look at it, experience that with your with your parents. Boy, all these are terrible shaped brushes. We want an ugly one, but man, some of these are almost like too much. I've rented a couple of German cars. The problem with the German cars is they just have the lights in the wrong place. I get, I, I'm used to the Japanese Korean cars so much that even American cars, I'll rent an American car. I'm like, where the hell are the lights? You end up trying to hit the windshield wipers and you turn the high beams on and stuff like that. It's just not, things aren't where I'm used to them being. So, give me a Japanese, give me a Japanese car any day. <laughs> 
but one here because there it's they drive on the wrong side of the road so you know <laughs> all right so we've got uh do we have one of these bushes that's massive no they're all split in two all right, all right so i usually start with these ones that are nice and busy first all right and uh let's see we're gonna put one of them on this stand right here in the middle behind this rock it's it's growing here behind this rock. That's the storyline of this guy. Okay. And um, I guess one of these, if I use them all up, we'll get two. Let's put this one here. And this grass is still kind of squishy. Not this grass, but this terrain is still kind of squishy. So I can put it on there and kind of push it in so that it, you get a good grab. It's not just sitting on the top of this material. Okay. All right. We'll make sure each one of these gets at least one. And then one of them will be happy enough to get two. All right, so we got one there in that corner. We've got one here in the middle. Uh, let's put one over here. There are a few, man, I wish the wording didn't dis disappear on me. There are a few sections of the Audubon without speed limits. Never through towns or at major intersections. Okay, that makes sense. But if you're a tra but if you have an accident and are traveling faster than 135 kilometers per hour, then you're at fault. Oh, shit. 135. Oh, crap. That's like over 70 miles an hour. Wow. What if you hit somebody else traveling at that speed? You both at fault? <laughs> Place I wouldn't want to drive is in Italy. Man, those people are crazy. Okay. Um, who gets the second one? This guy. Hundred thirty five kilometers per hour. Yeah, I mean it's like seventy five. Okay, now we'll do these little guys last. This guy's got two of these, so this one's gonna get two of these. Closer to 85 miles an hour, okay. Yeah, the problem for those of us here in the US, well, I'm not going to speak for everybody here because there's some people that just can't handle the metric anything. Um, uh, I can't. It's just it's visualization on some things. Um, it's a visual visualization issue. I, I like the metric system better, but uh, it's a visualization because of um, you know so many years of not using it kind of thing. Well, change my mind. I put a little one here. <laughs> Keep people guessing. But some people can't deal with it at all. Um, 
I cannot stand metric. Uh, I cannot stand um, imperial partitions of an inch. Drives me bananas. Nothing smaller than a quarter is should be allowed. That five sixteenth. That's just that's just dumb as hell. That that just shouldn't be. Um, I can't stand that stuff. And I work in construction, so I can't stand that stuff. That's just dumb. Um, I mentioned this before. I think the problem with the metric system is that your core unit, the meter, is too large. I think 39 or so inches is too big for a unit of one. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean by that is lots of things that you describe or you measure are not quite up to 39 inches. They're like 30 inches. So the number you use to describe that um, ends up, like in centimeters, ends up being a really large number for something that's like two feet long, which isn't really a large item. I don't know if you could visualize what I'm trying to get at. Um, it's not that it's decimal. Decimal by far is the way to go. It's doing something that's not decimal is just dumb. Um, it's just that your unit of one is, um, is just too big. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot of things you describe that are like, you know, 750 millimeters. Well, that's three quarters of a meter and that's 750 is a big number for something that's only, you know, 24 inches long <laughs> or so. So it, it becomes a, uh, a processing, try to visualize how big this item is. Um, that's it. I mean, kilometers. That's easy, like distance in kilometers, distance in meters. Yeah, that's, you know, where you're talking about something is, you know, a thousand meters away. That kind of stuff, you know, kind of makes sense. I like that. Um, I read a, uh, a couple of World War I books recently or had them read me in, in, uh, by Audible. I, I'm a big naval uh, warfare fan, or I used to be. Uh, it's still in my blood. And um, a couple of them on World War I. Oh, this one got a, this one got a big tuft. Okay, well, where's this big tough boy going to be? Let's put him right here. Um, and uh, it would describe, uh, it would describe, say, a battle, and it would describe the positions that different ships were at, and it would do them both. It would do them in in yards, and it would do it in meters. And it was, and the way it was done was, you know, and Lion was fighting, was firing a Derflinger at thirty two thousand two hundred yards, uh, thirty one thousand. 550 meters so it would literally would it, it was almost like it was interrupting itself to describe them both and i wish they would have just stuck with one or the other because a yard and a meter is so damn close that what difference does it make you know just go with a metric one you know um and it was just really annoying that it did that two books did that uh it was the um two books that i did one of them was the one on uh Maybe more than two books did that. Uh, the Castles of Steel book did that. And then the one that was written by the grandson of Jellicoe on Jutland. Both of them did that. And both of them were excellent books. They were just very annoying that they kind of interrupted themselves to do that kind of uh, calisthenics, so to speak, of verbal calisthenics. So I didn't, I didn't like that part. But, you know, whatever. I just thought it was very weird that they would go through that much effort to cater to... Uh, people that needed it in yards, not meters, when they were like almost the same me measurement. You know, I just thought that was very strange. All right, who did I piss off? Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, both were at fault. Okay, it's assumed that if you're traveling that fast, you didn't give yourself enough time to properly respond to a situation. Yeah, following distance is huge. Uh, they keep talking about doing away with unlimited speed limits, but we will. They keep talking about doing away with unlimited speed limits. Okay, so in other words, they keep talking about giving speed limits but we will wait until the usa bans guns yeah well it keeps getting closer every year but uh you know i wouldn't hold your breath um children have 30 centimeter rulers in school so their estimation is burnt in okay fair enough i grew up with inches but have used metric Metric is easier, but my brain thinks in inches. I think the way it would have done it would just have been doing, doing engineering scale, which engineering scale is decimal feet. So you've got your foot. I think the foot is excellent for a one unit. Maybe that's just what I'm used to. Okay. But 
dividing it into 12s and not into 12s and something else into 12s is just moronic, okay? <laughs> just, just, it just does not, does not be that way. But, you know, we're, we're kind of used to it, you know. And then, you know, and then uh, what is a liquid measurements in the, in, the, uh, in the imperial system? So you got a cup and two cups make pint. Okay, I'm with you. And then two pints makes a quart. Awesome. And then two quarts makes... Makes a gallon, right? Oh no, that makes a half gallon. Well, that's designed wrong, you know. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Come here for all your answers on uh, on things that are happening in the world. <laughs> what do we got left here? We got this guy here, and. Um, It's kind of like you guys have Starbucks everywhere around the world, right? Who came up with the sizes of Starbucks, right? A moron, right? The smallest size is the tall. Well, hell, it's the shortest one. Grande means big, and it's the middle size one. Well, what? <laughs> Who knows what the hell venti means? I don't know. It means 20, but I think it's 21. I don't know. Um, I guess the thing is, I'll say is, you know, I've never done drugs, so, you know, maybe people that come up with drugs, I, I don't really understand their reasoning. <laughs> I don't understand the, uh, I don't understand decisions made under the influence sometimes. <laughs> All right, we're going to put, uh, we're going to put a tuft over here. Metric liquid is great because one liter of water weighs a kilogram. I didn't know that. That's good. That's good. But you know, the hardest visualization for me is temperature. And I know that I know what one Celsius means. I know what one, what a hundred Celsius means. I get it. But to visualize someone, I can estimate it. I can, I can just kind of go, oh, it's about so and so many degrees, you know, because the conversion is just five ninths and no. So. That one's really hard. That, that's really hard to visualize the, the Celsius one. Because again, um, it doesn't matter that it makes sense. You're never talking about stuff that's 60 Celsius or 70 Celsius or 80 Celsius. You know, you could talk about the boiling point of water or you can talk about, you know, the temperatures that we live in. But the stuff in between the temperatures we live in and the boiling point of water, I mean, when do you ever talk about that stuff? You know? It's, I understand the, the, the correlation, but it's a visualization thing, you know? Um, oh, well, I'm fine with whatever people want to use, but I certainly don't have a problem with describing distances in meters. That's just long distances in meters. That's, or kilometers. That's, that's easy. Sixty-five is a sous vide. That's all you need. That sounds like a cooking term, and that's not my department. <laughs> that sounds like uh, French cooking. I don't do any cooking at all. I assemble things. I don't cook, and I've never gone hungry. I don't really eat fast food, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, me cooking is like my wife coming here and painting. No, no, no. We have our own. We have our own special set of skills. Ah <laughs> oh, man, where are we gonna put this little guy? I think we're gonna put put him growing over here.
Who thought of naming a car Nova? I think it means won't go in Spanish. Nova, yeah, Nova. Doesn't go. Yep. Name, car naming things are just another thing altogether. I'll have to think about that. That's uh, There's some things on there. Yeah, so apparently, like, American cars are, like, luxury items in other places. But then, you know, they, they do make other vehicles for other markets. You know, there's there's Fords that don't make it here to the U.S. So, um, my boss always would give people a hard time that they wouldn't buy an American car. And I've always driven a Japanese car. Nissan or Toyota, and um, he'd always give people a hard time for not buying an American car. But my vehicles have always been made and assembled in the United States, and his Fords that he's so proud of are not made in the United States ever. So, you know, who are you really supporting? <laughs> he didn't want to hear that. Oh, well. It's not where the vehicle's made. It's who the who's who's the QC guy at the end of the assembly line. I don't want Homer Simpson. I want a samurai. You know, I'm gonna chop somebody's head off when something ain't made right. Okay, I think we're done. Let's see what we're gonna. I remember when Arsenal Football Club was sponsored by Sega. Apparently, it had another meeting in Spanish. Sega, Sega. I don't know. It might be. Uh, it might be a slang term in Spain. I don't know. Uh, nothing weird to me. Um, yeah. Another thing that doesn't make sense on metric is like you're talking about screws and stuff like that. Why would you do metric screws? That's, you know, or, or bolts and stuff. It's four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeters, you know. You know, the, the, the standard size in is, is half inch. And, in, well, not the standard size, but a very common size is half inch. Very common size in metrics, 10 millimeter. So, here we go. Hungarian horse archers. There you go. Now they can join the rest of the clan. Let's uh, see if we can get a group shot with them. Hey, maybe we should put them on this thing. Hey, maybe we should put them on this thing here. Dun, da, da, da. This lighting is so weird. It looks like it has. It's it's so bright in the in the video. So I said you gotta take video. You gotta take pictures of these guys. Okay, here's our Hungarian so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it's not seven twelfths of the army done because there's ton tons of stuff left for this army. Let's see if this thing power still powers on. There we go. It's on a slow speed. So Camper's compensating for black. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a photo guy. I, I, I'm telling you, I try to take some close-up pictures of, of an army. I'll try like of a figure. I'll try four or five times, and if I don't have one that I like, I go with one of those. As I just, it's just really annoying. Um, you know, I'm a painter, so anyhow, I don't mind spending time with the paint, but technology stuff, yeah, I, I get frustrated easy. So there you go. There's a Hungarian so far. 
So uh, next we'll start uh, probably going into guys like this, doing some of these, uh, doing some of these knights, and then um, these will be the six knights, and then of course we'll have guys in the back that are uh, not as fancy. We don't have them out here just yet, but uh, yeah, that's probably what we'll do next is uh, paint them. And I'm probably going to do, uh, I'll probably do a unit of six and I'll turn around and do another unit of six. So Because we got certain guys, like these guys in particular, they'll go into the uh, the middle position. They won't be in the charge, but they'll be in the, I'm gonna have three guys in the front and three guys in the back. So we'll have a wedge in the front and then three guys straight across the back like I did with my other uh, my other Germans. So I think that they, they look, I like how they look that way, so. But anyhow, that's it. Uh, that's it for the Hungarians. So uh, the Hungarian light horse. We're not painting any more of those sons of bitches. Uh, we're done with them. So um, it did take uh, it did take a couple hours just to get the basing done on those three stands. But you know, it's just one of those things. So anyhow, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for uh, hanging in here, and uh, we're gonna go do some gaming now. And uh, hopefully for uh, well, not right this second, but uh, soon, and uh, hopefully some filming. So. Stay tuned. We'll have uh, some other uh, material for you guys to check out uh, in the future. See you, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.